So I've just ordered both these mechanisms. So I've just taken delivery of this new bonnet latch. Actually, it has some standard Torx screws. I believe I've got some of those spare. So result. So just before I reattach this latch, I hadn't noticed that there are two of these springs. There's one on the left and there's another one on the right that's much newer. I probably would have replaced them as a pair, but to be honest, that looks acceptable. So for the moment, I'm just going to replace the one on the left and the latch. So I've just given that a bit of a clean. We're now going to reattach the new latch. So this is the part number for anybody looking to replace this latch on a BMW E39, OEM from BMW. The two screws you'll need have an AK 10.9 on them. I basically ended up using a T30 socket. As you've just seen, this Allen key set is a bit clunky to remove the Torx screws. These are also OEM items available from BMW. We're about to change the rather rusty upper bonnet hood lock. This is a brand new item from BMW. You'll also need two screws and a T30 screwdriver. This appears immovable at the moment, so I've decided to replace the one on the right because I've still got another one in the post. So this is the one that was on there. You can see that this was painted to make it last a little bit longer, but uh, again, another 
two Torx screws to attach this just like the door latch so they are looking nice and new we're going to have to go back to the drawing board to find out how to release these rusted Torx screws That is both the upper hood locks and the latch replaced. We also have two new locks for the bottom to replace both these rusty ones. So yeah, this is proving not so straightforward to just pull off because you'd think it should just come off, but a little bit of pressure. I mean, come on. Everybody on YouTube always makes this look like it's a doddle, but five minutes later this is still jammed on. So yeah, I'm going to have to find a way to pry this out. So what I've ended up doing is just ripping it off. So I tore it off. And yeah, this is a, a brute force method. So yeah. 
so we have the driver side front wheel up we're going to try and remove this wheel it's missing a wheel nut where it failed an MOT we're just going to replace all of these hopefully I'm also going to figure out how to remove that center cap because I've got four replacement BMW hubcaps and if you look beneath the car there's a bolt that we need to access to drain the oil and I purchased this socket extension kit that we might be able to use to remove the bolts on the wheel you're going to need a proper socket wrench 17 millimeter as these are fastened quite tight so on my other BMWs there is a wheel locking nut so I suspect there this is the toolkit that all looks original with the locking nut the anti-theft wheel nut so we'll give that a try So dropping the tire and using some of this has enabled the bolt to become unstuck. So I now need to lift the wheel back up again. The difference between the OEM bolt and the standard replacement ones. So the brake disc and pads, shoes, etc. are all corroded. I cannot see any of this passing without being completely replaced. So while the wheel is off, it makes it way easier to access the drain plug for the oil. So we're going to turn the engine on for about 10 minutes and start the stopwatch so we now have some temperature in the oil in the engine which should allow the oil to be more viscous so I have a socket extension and that is now on the oil drain screw that just needs to be unscrewed and then the oil is going to drop into the bucket.
finally. So on the screw for the oil drain there is this washer that you need to remove and in the box that came with the oil filter you have a replacement ring or washer that you need to install before you return the drain plug plug screw. So I did intend to replace the wheel nuts but I'm going to return these back and replace the wheel nuts when I replace the brake pads and discs as everything is so rusty. You can remove the center hubcap which is great which means I can install brand new replacement ones from BMW. Now we need to fill the car up with new oil, six and a half litres. I'm using 5W40 as that is recommended by BMW experts where you have a BMW over 100,000 miles. If you want to use the standard 5W30, go ahead. But many people in the know advise to use 5W40 for a BMW post 100,000 miles. So we're just going to run the code reader after the oil service.
So we've still got a misfire. A misfire on cylinder six. Thermostat problem. Camshaft position sensor A. A misfire with low fuel. System two lean bank one. And system two lean bank two. So two new errors. The last two errors haven't appeared before. So I'm going to change all the spark plugs and possibly the ignition coils. I'm hoping not to have to replace the ignition coils because that's another 300 pound bill basically. But we're going to start off with replacing all the spark plugs. After running the C reader and finding the P104 error code, System 2 Lean Bank 2, which I believe is this side of the engine, and Bank 1, which is the other side. Uh, both are generating a system lean error message, which they say relates to this air filter pipe, and usually there are vacuum leaks, and lo and behold, there is a smoking gun. There's a huge hole because this sensor here has become detached because that has deteriorated and if you look further in you'll find that there's a pipe uh, by the intake that has a hole uh, as well I'll see if I can get some additional light there there's a huge hole there as well so all of this needs to be replaced the upper intake hose has arrived I'm still patiently waiting for the lower one so I can refit it and I decided to clear this sensor and noticed as well that this cable here with this sensor I mean absolutely all of these pipes are leaking or are broken so they all need replacing after nearly two weeks I now have the replacement intake hoses the lower intake boot on the right was delivered earlier today the upper intake boot was delivered a couple of days ago as was the PCV replacement kit from Febby Bilstein. Anyway, we have the opportunity to replace both these intake boots. Hopefully they will eliminate the error codes that have been detected by the OBD2 scanner we should then be able to move on with preventative maintenance by replacing the PCV system all the vacuum lines the radiator the fan clutch the water pump the thermostat etc etc The state of the upper intake boot with cracks everywhere. The lower intake boot doesn't have as many cracks as the upper one, though this pipe here that I've had to snap off 
had a gaping hole in it. The 4th of April 2006 was the last time this filter was replaced. So far much more room, there's a clamp here and just the screw to remove the air filter housing box, needs a bit of a hoover, we'll do that in just a moment but oodles more room now. So we're looking to reattach the lower and upper intake boot. It's really awkward to access the lower intake boot, so I'm probably going to remove the disavalve, which is this item over here. It'll also give me the opportunity to inspect it because that is another known failure point. Yeah, so let's get on. You really need to remove everything. The disavalve that I've just removed and also this pipe here, there's a screw there. Otherwise, you won't be able to screw this bolt here that I'm trying to access for the lower intake boot. That needs to be housed securely there's this little uh, pipe and then obviously the, the hose itself onto the throttle body. Very cramped for space, so the easiest way is to just remove everything. Intake box, everything. Uh, otherwise you're going to be very, very cramped. This is the DISA valve. By all accounts, it's not possible to get a replacement one so this will have to be reconditioned it is flicking only one side though I will give it a little bit of a clean the disavalve the E91 touring being put to good use just been to jet wash the air filter boxes and all the trim that I've 
just removed off the E39. Just going to run this C reader after changing the intake boots. I just need to make sure the engine switched on. There we are. And then Map cooling thermostat control signal, circuit signal high. Camshaft position sensor A.
as you've just seen, my engine is behaving like the Vatican when a new pope is being selected. We have a situation where smoke is billowing from the engine. So it looks as if I'm going to have to replace this, which is a replacement rocker cover gasket. This one is from Elring, who are the bee's knees when it comes to rocker cover gaskets for a BMW. This is the go-to supplier if you're looking to replace this part on your BMW. This is the most durable and resilient component that you can purchase from your BMW if you're looking to replace the valve cover gasket. You'll also need to make sure that you have some replacement rings. You get replacement rings. These are from Febby Bilstein. You'll need to ensure that you replace these at the same time as the rocker cover gasket. Uh, you'll also need a little bit of sealant to use on the edges to ensure that those do not leak. Also starting work on the interior which is very very dirty. I believe this car was last cleaned in the 2000s. That is the state of all the seating with damp that has settled and practically ruined the cloth. I'll be looking to take this to a jet wash to see if that removes most of the dirt. And that is the result. I'm sure the detailers will be spitting feathers but it is just so dirty it does need aggressive cleaning state of the driver side just removed the seat full of dirt So the main reason I've removed the seat is because there's loads of dirt that's firmly attached all around the seating area. So there's no way to clean this mess without removing the seat as that allows for better access. Loads of sand and mud and dirt this is the state of the gear stick gator will require a wash and being leather I'll be looking to polish this hopefully that should bring it up quite nicely and after a quick wash it looks pretty good but it does have a hole in it there so I am probably going to replace this with a new one this is the driver side seat after a quick jet wash still quite a lot of dirt that's firmly lodged into all the crevices of the material but it is already acres and acres better than it was just half an hour ago
So already a marked improvement to the driver's side interior. Just removing the seat and spending a couple of hours cleaning. Obviously this is going to continue. I've removed the center console because the door lock button doesn't work, it keeps sticking. So that needs to be cleaned or replaced. And next up I need to remove the passenger side seat to get rid of all the mud and dirt and damp and moist. But yeah, really impressed with the way that this is coming along right now. So we're going to remove the passenger side front seat. I'm going to show you how that's done. Yesterday I managed to remove the driver side front and boy is it looking much much better than the damp and dirt prior. So we're going to work on the passenger side here the front seat that I took to a jet wash. It's come up okay but there's still quite a lot of firmly lodged dirt that's going to need to be treated. I'm going to go and buy some carpet cleaner. Initially give it a bash myself otherwise I'm probably thinking of taking it to some professional cleaners so uh, to remove the front seat you'll need two tools one of them is a T50 socket which we have here and you'll also need just a plain screwdriver and in fact I'll just show you what I removed there are five screws in total you've got three at the back these two go into the floor, that one is slightly uh, perpendicular to this seat and you've got these two plastic covers which are the first ones that you need to remove on the rear. These uh, protect passengers from being scratched or harmed by the sharp edges of the metal. So these are the first items to remove and you'll need a screwdriver there's a little yeah tab there that you need to uh, just dislodge with the screwdriver and it'll easily come up and then you just need to wedge the center piece out and it will just lift off so we'll uh, give that a bash now I'm starting with the rear of the seat so what you want to do is just make sure that the seat is lifted up as high and as forward as possible using the seat controls uh, the seat can't really go any further this will give you uh, much more room and then what you want to do is to find there and then you just wedge it out to there it just lifts off it's obviously caught up in quite a lot of dirt I'll need to give that a quick vacuum so I can access this screw this is the T50 that you need to remove and it's exactly the same on this side ah, there it's come off uh, without breaking as well and there is the T50 screw to remove. I'm just going to give this a quick vacuum.
and then to remove the bolt there's some Loctite that's been used so it is quite tightly fastened and then that one's next And finally, Okay, so that bolt connects to the seat belt. You can see there. You should be able to lift the seat belt now. So that is what that final bolt is for. And now to remove the front bolts, I've pushed the chair back as far as possible to expose this bolt here and that bolt there on the opposite side lift off so the chair is rocking back super so the car keeps 
giving me back some of what I paid for it. I think I've probably recovered about three or four quid in change. So I'm just going to give it a quick hoover. So there are two steps left beneath the ch chair, the seat, and the first is to dislodge this. What you need to do is pull this section, this goes all the way down or out, and I'd recommend that you use one of these, just a kitchen knife. Um, it's quite awkward. I'll show you how to remove that in a second and then once This has been pulled down This will just pull out That is the first step and then There's this wire here That just needs to be lodged off with a screwdriver and This pulls all the way out That is all there is to it. And here you have a comparison of the first iteration cleaning of the driver side compared with the passenger side that has loads of gravel, dirt that's going to be far much easier to remove now the seat is no longer there and that is the state of a freshly removed seat compared with this one that I removed and just took to a jet wash yesterday. We definitely need something that's good at removing gravel, dirt, mud to hopefully bring these seats back to something resembling respectability. I may replace these with leather ones, but to be honest, it's going to depend on whether I sell or keep the car. And a side profile. It's just very hard to reach and remove dirt and damp. So the car had this phone cradle that was wedged into here. Uh, that I've removed. The car does have a battery drain issue. I suspect that this might be related. Somebody's done some DIY in here. So probably yeah the main cause of the battery drain problem. Obviously this is also legal now in 2022. Nowhere you'd be allowed to hold a phone. We're just going to give this a quick hoover. A quick tip is to use a brush. This is very good at dislodging uh, the dust. Very, very useful. So we have the 3 3i touring 
being put to good use. We're just going to take this to have a jet wash. I may actually speak with a car valeting shop and get a quote as to how much it might cost to repair or recondition all these seats. It is worth noting that the rear headrests are pretty faded. But at least they are replaceable. So obviously quite mouldy. But the colouring of the material is still pretty much as new at the front. But definitely faded due to sunlight. Back from the jet wash, the seat hasn't come up particularly great and I actually washed this at two separate jet washes and this is what the passenger side seat looks like after a jet wash. The initial mould, damp, dirt, mud, gravel has cleared somewhat but as you can see with the driver side which is dried from yesterday there is deeply seated gravel that's going to require some effort to remove now the question is whether to replace these with leather seats you can only get second-hand ones and they all tend to be quite worn <laughs> These seats look pretty good, to be honest, and they're quite comfortable. They've got the ballasts that the M Sport seats have. So here on the side of the seats, this tends to be what's key on BMW seats and you can see straight away at this section. So if you've got this section and it pulls out, you have the PS Delhi's stance comfortable seat but these are more than fine and hopefully if they clean up well I shouldn't need to replace them so this is probably my 20th pail of water but this is coming along really really well isn't it so yeah still some soap left in there but a little bit of fairy liquid and this brush has really helped to dislodge the dirt now i'm not sure if i'm going to be able to apply the same trick to the rear this is all spoiled with gravel and building material. It's taken about 20 pails of water. This will probably require 210 bottles of fairy liquid. So it might be better to just buy some replacement parts from a broken down non-runner. So yes, what an improvement. That is what it looks like. We're going to continue giving this a clean tomorrow. This should come off really quite easily with a brush and a vacuum cleaner. The focus really was on that gravel, mud, dirt that's come off quite nicely. If you're enjoying the content on this channel, please be sure to like, comment and subscribe. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm.